Welcome back, everyone. You know times are changing when even Switzerland doesn't want to play neutral anymore. Instead of staying out of conflicts like it has been for the last few hundred years, it's finally decided it's going to start cracking down, at least within the parameters of its own country. Their first order of business? Throwing a writer in jail for calling someone mean names. That's right, French-Swiss writer and commentator Alain Soral was just sentenced by a court in Switzerland to 60 days in jail for calling another journalist unhinged and a fat lesbian in a video on Facebook nearly two years ago. Soral was sentenced for the crimes of defamation, discrimination and incitement to hatred. On top of the prison time, Soral will reportedly be forced to pay thousands of Swiss francs in legal fees and fines. Obviously, the LGBT community in Switzerland is celebrating this, saying it's an important moment for justice and rights for them. But the remaining citizens, the ones with common sense, are raising concerns that the word police could come after them next. Jay Dyer joins me now to react, comedian and author of the books, Esoteric Hollywood. Jay, thanks for being with us. It's great to have you. Thank you, Allison. Glad to be here. Glad to be talking about Orwellian crackdowns on speech. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure you're well aware, uh, you of all people, know that all around the world and increasingly in the West, journalists and average citizens alike are being jailed for speech. And for what crime, right? Running foul of the alphabet mafia, whose interests have become almost interwoven into the very fabric of Western society. I mean, we see numerous phrases and subjects describing their now somehow acceptable behavior being added in dictionaries. Jay, how has this ever-increasing deviant grouping of individuals been able to, at the highest levels, grasp power and influence so quickly? It actually comes, in my view, from the top down. There are institutes, foundations, groups like the Tavistock Institute, which have spent many decades studying how to weaponize not just language, but actually rights groups or what are perceived to be rights groups. You could go back, for example, to the 1960s counterculture, and one of the so-called anti-establishment figures, Dr. Timothy Leary, the champion of tune in, uh, turn out, drop out, whatever his phrase is, uh, he was actually the, the, the guru that was uh, you know, giving everybody LSD. And he said uh, a very insightful phrase that is the key to all of this uh, fake counterculture. He said that when I packaged the ability to take LSD as a right that you were being suppressed from having and exercising, then everybody wanted to rebel. But until I packaged it as a perceived oppressive uh, uh, status that you had, nobody really cared about it. And so they do the same thing with these managed revolutions where what they do is they basically tell you that you're being suppressed from an exercise of a right which isn't actually a right. The ability to engage in uh, deviant behaviors isn't actually a right. In many cases, it's actually a crime. So they repackage it, and that was actually a technique that they studied at the Tavistock Institute as to how to repackage these things and sell them as a right. So the, the scary part is that we're not just dealing with incompetent people or, or evil people, but powerful entities that have the ability to weaponize these things and sell people on what they think is a right, but is actually social engineering. Absolutely. So true. And on that note, uh, speaking of powerful people, this week the Pope said he would be open to having the Catholic Church bestow blessings for same-sex couples. Now, he didn't retreat from saying the church still recognizes same-sex relationships as objectively sinful, but that, quote, we cannot be judges who only deny, reject, and exclude. Jay, it seems that there has been a noticeable slide to the agenda of the left for this pope. Would you agree to that? And, and what do you make of this? Yeah, and this goes back to the history uh, that he was involved in, in, in uh, his background when he was an archbishop. He was actually involved in working with the CIA back at that time in Operation Condor. So I, I believe, in my opinion, that's kind of when he was already uh, part of the establishment. They probably had the goods on him back then. And ever since then, he's been a perfect key figure to maneuver into that office that he has in order to exert a very slow kind of gradual change. And I say slow and gradual because in the encyclical that he did, Amoris Laetitia, about seven years ago, he began to introduce changes which people at that time were figuring out were preparatory for where they wanted to take things in our day, seven years later. And that's exactly what happened. Two years ago, Francis, two years ago, roughly two years ago, Francis was asked these questions about, could we have 
uh, softening up and a kind of a, a blessing that's not the full status of marriage, but maybe, I don't know, like a 60% type of thing. Mm -hmm. And he actually reversed his stance from a couple of years ago and says in, the, in this more recent answers to the questions of these cardinals, there is a kind of quote, he says, an analogous union that occurs in a partial way, a partial analog analogous union, he says, which in some cases we might be able to, quote, bless. So this signifies a reversal from his uh, stance a few years ago. And that's actually what most people said was the long term goal uh, with this figure. And that's because he is actually a tool, in my view, of the World Economic Forum, the uh, global elite Klaus and company. In fact, his mentor was a guy named uh, Kamara, who was himself a, a liberation theologian and also very close to Klaus Schwab. Very interesting. I, I totally agree. I think he is a tool of the globalist elite. Uh, and no question about that, especially given the recent developments here. Uh, now, of course, we've all seen the infamous Mockingbird media clip where all of the, the news outlets are speaking the same thing. Let's roll that clip now just to serve as a reminder, and then we'll come right back. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 It's certainly no secret the mainstream media are all marching in lockstep and spewing the same selected narrative. But Jay, I know you talk a lot about how it's much more than just the news media and rather Hollywood itself, along with the shows and movies it produces. Is there still an esoteric government relationship with Hollywood where there is an agreement to produce a vision or a roadmap, so to speak, for society, one that the deep state power structure has endorsed? Everything you're saying is dangerous to democracy. What you are saying is dangerous to democracy. Yeah, of course, uh, it, th there's an old history to this. It goes back even to prior to World War I, a connection between uh, the Pentagon, between the deep state, between power players, and all forms of fiction and propaganda actually were, were utilized in full force in every war. Um, and that's just really a natural relationship that most people don't know about. But there's some 16 agencies that are liaisons between the deep state, between Pentagon and, and, and Hollywood. It's been the way for a long time. It really ramped up in the Cold War. And I'm glad you mentioned Mockingbird because really the media is just an extension of, you know, mass Mockingbird media, as you said, is an extension of that old kind of Hollywood legacy complex. And they were absolutely in bed uh, with the deep state. The CIA basically co-opted some 400 plus journalists throughout the world during Mockingbird. And it's absolutely no different when we look at Hollywood, the big uh, uh, you know studios throughout the decades, they were always filming war propaganda. They were always working with the CIA to consult on how to craft propaganda in a very specific scientific way. In fact, there was a recent FOIA request where hundreds of documents showed that the uh, NSA, the Pentagon, the CIA, the military had over the last several decades throughout hundreds of TV shows, I said hundreds of documents, hundreds of pages of documents showed that there were hundreds of TV shows, even as innocuous as things like Cupcake Wars, that the Pentagon and the military had paid to have propaganda uh, placement uh, put in. So yeah, this is an old uh, uh, technique, nothing new to it. And it's, but it's now the difference is that it's very specific, it's very precise, and it's very, um, uh, I, mean, so, I mean, they've got it down to a degree of, of nuance where you really, you have to be very perceptive and awake to, to notice it. Just like you you played that clip of all these people sort of in a zombie mantra, repeating all of this stuff. I mean, unless you, you know, you're very perceptive, you'll fall for this. I know, and it's shocking that so many people are so receptive to everything. They, they just eat it up. They don't even think twice. They've just totally been brainwashed by uh, what's being shoved down their throat. It's really amazing to see it all. Now, we're almost out of time, Jay, but in the time remaining, I want you to talk to us about the driving force the religion, if you will, of the globalist elites. We see the highest organizations of government and corporations all working together to bring about their vision for the future. And nowhere is this encapsulated better than the UN's own Agenda 2030, which Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum is the head cheerleader. Of course, we also see the WHO, the Bank of International Settlements, and the IMF all moving along the same path, which leads nowhere other than total control over the people and a, and a total just erosion of freedom, really. 
Uh, under it all, Jay, what exactly is their uniting force and purpose in all of this? Well, they don't always talk about openly in their books what the ultimate force that they're under is, but they do talk about the erection of a technocratic, uh, you know, global Skynet style order, like uh, in the last third of Klaus's book, Shaping uh, of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The mentor to uh, mentors prior to this uh, that Henry Kissinger picked out to run the deep state back in the 60s and 70s was a, fi a figure named uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski. And in between two ages, he wrote that we would have this same technocratic Skynet order coming into place. I believe that ultimately, whether they know it or not, they are servants of Satan. They serve a spiritual force that is really impelling and motivating them to erect this technocratic global one world order. They don't have to be cognizant of that to, to still serve that force and that entity that's pushing for what the UN uh, many years ago called, quote, a Luciferian order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's it's certainly interesting to see it all shaping up and uh, heading at lightning speed towards uh, 2030. It'll be an interesting time ahead. Hopefully more people continue to listen to people like yourself and wake up to the very bleak reality that our freedoms are being stripped away. Jay Dyer, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and insight. Thank you, Allison. Take care. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.